Hello and welcome to Zevi's Garage. Today, we're gonna to be starting the install process for the RPM Power R400 Turbo Kit on my 2012 Mini Countryman with the N18 engine. That being said, this engine is fully stock. That turbo kit is absolutely capable of destroying my stock internals, or not mine, but my cars. So it's gonna be turned down quite a bit, but it should still be plenty spicy. So we're gonna install it as is, run it for a couple months like this while I build my fully built engine and then we're gonna put our built engine in here and turn it up so the first thing we are going to do is start by removing the factory turbocharger here okay to get the factory downpipe out from the top my goal is not to lift this car till the end of this project which is probably not gonna happen but if you rotate the down pipe 90 degrees counterclockwise. I don't think I can do this while holding the camera, but you can pull it out. Okay, just as described, pretty much you rotate counterclockwise, lift. When it gets stuck, you turn clockwise again, lift, vice versa. So and so. So we're gonna stock turbo off now, and then we'll see you in a minute. For reference, the oil feed line is 18 mil. The coolant upper and lower uh, feed and return lines are 19 mil. And the bottom oil line is an 8 mil. Okay, so we undid all this. The one thing we have to do is unbolt the physical turbo. We already have our wastegate line disconnected, as you can see. So then now, you can either remove here. So one, two, there's two more on the bottom. So four bolts total. What I'm doing is I'm just going to remove the whole man uh, manifold. These are all 11s and these are also 11s here. So we're going to just remove all these since we're removing the manifold anyways. Easy peasy. Yeah, you can see I have all the manifold off. The RPM one comes with this on heat shield slash exhaust manifold gasket. So we're gonna just take that off. Boom. We will have to replace this because it's a uh, different style one that goes on. And then this oil feed line needs to go. Let's see? Leaking oil down there, and it was leaking oil up here. So we're gonna put the bridge going on. We are doing our first test fit with the manifold. I have not read the directions for how to properly fly it in. So we're gonna wing it. Today's video is brought to you by my friend Mini to Be. He's a Mini Cooper second gen specialist, and he offers all kinds of services for these cars. He offers weight. What is that? You need a key? He offers key cloning services. You have a dead footwell module, no control of your headlights, no window controls. He can clone or repair your footwell module. You have a dead ECU? He can fix that. Wait, what? You want another ECU? He can do that too. Along with all the module services that he offers, he's located in Pennsylvania, so shoot him a message and get your Mini to be running right today. reference this will not fit with the stock oil filter housing i was curious of it but it won't fit so i'm gonna go install the actual rpm powered uh oil filter housing the bullet one that they make and the relocation kit and then we'll get to this step in the meantime i gotta get this back out okay so on to today's part of the adventure we have to remove the factory oil filter housing. So we're gonna do, this should be four of these uh, eight millimeter bolts. We're gonna remove those and pull it off. Okay, so we have our oil filter housing off. You can see here in the coolant passage, so someone has a little stop leak or something like that. We're not really supposed to use that on the minis.
Once again, as always with these engines, always, always, always perform health checks when you can. Here, and we're just doing a basic one of inspecting our exhaust runners here in the head, making sure there's no fresh oil. If there is, then we have a mechanical issue that we would need to address. Fortunately, this is pretty good. Decent there, decent there, decent there, there, left, and right. Okay, so we have our RPM powered oil filter relocation kit, which this part of it is the billet oil filter housing that replaces the big blocky factory on with this pretty small compact style one. This is a million times better than the cheap aftermarket ones that you find. If you go cheap, you're probably going to have oil leaks from the sandwiching plate. Um, I've chased too many oil leaks in the past with crappy plates. Last time I installed this, it installed just fine. Zero leaks. So that was first try. The other ones was like 20 million tries and I was like, what do I suck? No. Quality parts make a big difference. It's worth it. Go buy it. Anyways, enough talking about this. Uh, as I'm going to install this, I have a little PTSD of when I blew up my last factory N18. But we're gonna install all this anyways. We're gonna limit the boost, limit the fueling, and hopefully not break this. So one thing I forgot to mention is there are four, two, Okay, well, maybe I don't know how to count. One, two, three, and the fourth is at the top. So we're going to have to remove this guy here to access that bolt. Okay, take sort of two. I had to strip a couple parts off to gain access here. And you can see this is now ready to be installed. socket already slash hex I totally forgot to grab it I'm gonna go grab that in a sec I'm just gonna lightly put these in with my fingers so that they're ready okay so they had said to apply a hair of thread lock so that's what we're gonna do now it's the next bolt because I forgot to do it on the first one okay there's a little drop on here Also, the socket for these is a H5 hex. And the torque is either 10 or 12 Newton meters. I will have to check. So, what we're gonna do. So the soup down there, that would have been bad. Okay, let's not put our phone there anymore. I'm gonna go torque these to 12 or 10 newton meters. Let me go check. Okay, so we have our new housing on. We have, where is it? Our new oil uh, feed line coming up and around to here. And we'll have to figure out the drain side because it's different from the factory one. Here's the one for the factory turbo. The one for the R400 should be about half the size because the turbo has the metal version of this coming down to like about here somewhere. So we have that in and let's see what happens from here. We'll probably test fit the manifold just to see where we're at. We're into one issue. This line here hits the exhaust manifold. That being said, this entire plate was set up for the R300. So it's gonna have a couple of those different things like little fittings and such. So 
I'm gonna check what RPM does for the R400, or I'll check my previous pictures from my last kit install. But I'm guessing I'm gonna have to 90 it, and then have it come up. Bada bing, bada boom. Here is a test fit of the manifolds with the N18 here. Looks pretty, pretty dope. I'm gonna test fit the turbo now to see where it's going to line up for the oil uh, return right there. So as you can see, instead of it just thing right here, it has this whole piece here. Okay, here is me test fit holding the turbo. You can see down in there that it's close, but not quite there. So I do have one hose that is mocked up for this. Hold on, focus, please. I'll move my thumb away, see if it'll focus on that. Nope. Okay, cool, don't focus then. Okay, hopefully you guys can see. There's the oil drain from the turbo, and there's where it's supposed to mount. Okay, here's our predicament. This is our cool lint line. I don't know why I said it like that. This is our coolant line that goes into the turbo. On this side, the issue is that this is a much bigger turbo than factory. And the coolant line does not seem clear enough to go into the actual hole. The line is a little too short, kind of hits things. So, essentially, I probably have to. It's hard because I'm holding the turbo because I don't have a band clamp right now. I have to extend this side here, possibly for clearance, and maybe extend this side down too. But we'll have to see. I'm trying to see if I can make something myself right now. So here is where we are at. We're making uh, custom coolant lines out of the uh, oil feed like so. I'm going to cut this one here. Slide a hose on there. That one I just flipped upside down. And then I have one of these. But reversed so the banjo goes down. Unlike factory where it comes up in the bottom. Um, let's see where we at. So I removed the top AC line here to gain access to enough clearance to install the oil filter housing and that's what you can see what I'm doing right now. It just slides right in. You can kind of sneak it around. Generally best if you remove the AC compressor so you can drill the second hole in the block here to support it more. In this case I'm just going to be using the one mount for now. But on my next block on the built engine then I'll drill the second hole so that it's more secure. But I'm using a light beta Loctite and make it snug and everything should hold. We have that nice and snug. This should be plenty secure now. We have our oil cooler lines and such set up down in here. So if we trace the lower hose down here, it goes around behind all of this and into the lower part of the oil filter housing here the actual relocation where your aftermarket cartridge style filter will screw in and then from there we will follow this line here which will be oriented like so you see the arrow there will come along here along here I have it right on the top which will then go into the oil cooler which I have to run backwards because that's how it's run on the countryman for at least for the setup that's what I was told to do by a friend um, even though I think I've tried running it that way before. Yeah, I've run that side before. But you can see from engine oil in, from cooler out. And I guess you could technically swap the direction that you run the lines. If assuming you do it correctly. But I always filter it before it makes it to the cooler. Because with my previous engine failure, I, as you guys saw, I lost an engine. And because I ran it through the filter first, the oil cooler is sal salvageable. I went through, checked everything I could, everything looks good. Ideally, if you have big baller, more appropriate budget will say for this kind of stuff, unlike me, you would replace this to be safe. I went through, checked all the lines, I caught all the fluid out of all the units, including using the drain on here, nothing. The only one that had bits of metal was the one that went to the filter and the filter obviously, but after the filter, everything looked clean. Oh, and then I forgot to mention for the lines, the one from the cooler, which will be the lower, 
goes back through here, follow it back into the top port here, like so. When tightening the bolts on the R400 manifold, I advise one, not when you insert them, don't put them all the way so the manifolds can have a gap so that you can slide these on without any clearance issues. These are the troublesome ones down here. That being said, this is an early uh, model of the manifold. The production, the latest production one that I remember installing, the clearances were easier to um, install all this. I don't remember having any weird issues or anything. But I remember this one when I took this manifold off a car. So, because this one I pulled directly myself off a different car. So, yeah, just watch the ones that are low clearance here. Like I said, if I slide this manifold in, it's going to get closer here and not going to have enough room to get tools on there. One of my favorite parts about the R400 oil filter relocation kit is you get to use a cartridge style oil filter. Here we have the K&N HP 1017. This is what we need for this. So, as you can see, quite a lot of progress. I'll come back to that in a minute. But we're gonna go into the car and install this oil filter. Okay, so here is where we are at. We have our manifold fully installed. We have our turbo fully installed and clocked. We have our downpipe on. We have our cooling lines, which these are temporary ones that I've made out of factory lines and a couple modifications. The main thing I'm struggling with is charge pipe. I will deal with that later though. I'm just trying to finish the oiling and run it, and then I'll deal with the charge pipe later when it's not so damn sunny. I just want to make sure everything works correctly in case I need to go back into it.
So here is the last main final update for the R400 install. What I have going on here, we have this side not tapped into anything because we are not running a boost controller currently. We're just running off of uh, wastegate spring pressure. So I just turned this around just for accessibility for that side. But if you get a boost controller, you'll be using this one. Do not cap this, it needs to be venting. Um, this side here, the inner one, I have hooked up to a, uh, a line that goes around to the charge pipe currently. You can change how you route it depending on what you want. Now, I still have to cap this, as I'm still working on this currently. But down here, I have a nipple here that originally it went from the turbine housing, sorry, the compressor housing, directly to the wastegate. But that can create some lag. And also, <laughs> ironically, I'm still in stock in a cooler, which I still need to get a new one. I just, I'm not sure what I want. I usually like the ATM speed shop one. Don't know if I'm gonna run that for this or something custom, but no cheap crappy um, parts that people like to run. So this line goes from here to here, which will give like mild spool time, hopefully. This will be the longest right here because it's regulating before the air even gets into the engine. And then, um, give me one sec. Mm -hmm. So you can run from here to here here to the charge pipe before the throttle blade or the fastest spool you run from the wastegate line here directly into the manifold after the throttle blade that is supposed to lead for the quickest spool time but it's um it's a little more dangerous because the wastegate has less time to react to overboost situations And then for the blow-off valve here, we have our tile blow-off valve, which we have a vacuum line running that's teed into my boost gauge, which I have running into this plug down here, as I just showed, that you could potentially use for the wastegate, but I'm not going to be because I'm on stock internals and I'd rather not destroy everything. So we have mild spool time, but we will be using this for the off of because it needs to be after the throttle blade.